Hi there! If you're going to cook, you're going to need a knife at some point. Today we're going to talk about the three knives I think you should have in your kitchen if you're just starting out, as well as what each knife is best for cutting. Let's head into the kitchen. So the first knife I think everyone should have is the chef's knife. This knife has a long blade with a flat edge, and the edge is the sharp part. The top of the blade is usually flat, but sometimes you'll see one that has a slightly, that's slightly rounded at the tip of the blade. The blade of a chef's knife is often between 8 and 12 inches long, but they may be a little shorter or a little longer. I currently have two chef's knives, and one is five and three quarter inches long, and the other is seven and three quarter inches long. So now you may be wondering, well, what's a chef's knife best for cutting? Let's cover the other two knives first, and then we'll get into what each is best for. The second knife I think everyone should have is a serrated knife. If you've seen a bread knife, that's a serrated knife, but imagine a shorter version. A serrated knife has a bumpy edge, and the serrations sort of look like upside down waves. For the serrated knife, I think everyone should have, the blade will be shorter than your chef's knife. Of the two serrated knives I have, one is almost five inches long, and the other is four and a half inches long. So these might be considered serrated utility knives or maybe a serrated paring knife because they're shorter. The last of the three knives I think everyone should have is the paring knife. This knife has a short blade with a flat edge. The paring knife is the shortest of the three I'm covering, with many having a blade of only three to four inches long. Of course you might find some paring knives that are slightly shorter or longer. Of the two paring knives that I have, one's blade is three and a half inches long and the other's is three and three quarter inches long. So those are the three knives I think everyone should have in their kitchen to start out with for cooking and food prep. A chef's knife, a serrated utility knife, and a paring knife. Now let's get into what each knife is best for. The chef's knife, which I'm gonna be honest, is my favorite knife. Is that weird, having a favorite knife? Oh well. <laughs> So it's no surprise that it's the knife that I used, that I do use the most. It's great for cutting majority of things you'll be cutting. Vegetables, meat, raw or cooked, just be sure to wash it between going from raw to cooked. Since the edge of the chef's knife is so long, you can cover a lot of surface area in one fell swoop. So it's a great knife for chopping up herbs cutting a large sandwich in half, or carving a turkey. The last thing that I'll mention that a chef's knife is good for isn't even cutting something. It's crushing garlic cloves in order to get the skin off. So you place your garlic clove on the cutting board, place the blade of the knife on top of the clove sideways with the sharp edge directed away from you so your knife will be lying on its side. You're going to have one hand on your handle of the knife and then take the heel of the palm of your free hand and give the side of your knife a good whack. This will split the skin of your garlic clove and it'll allow you to take the skin off much easier. All right, let's move on to the serrated knife. So yes, bread knives are serrated and serrated knives are good for cutting bread, but if you have to have one or the other, a serrated bread knife or a serrated utility knife, I would choose the serrated utility knife. Even though it's smaller, it's more versatile because you can still cut bread with a serrated knife. But this next thing I'm gonna mention might be a little more difficult if you were to just have a bread knife to cut it with. So I have one word for you, cheese. Cheddar cheese is the staple cheese in my fridge and when I need to cut off some slices off of the block, I reach for my shorter serrated knife. The serrated knife can also be used for cutting up fruits and veggies. 
The serrated edge is good for cutting through tough crusts, like we mentioned bread, and tough skins of foods. So I already mentioned bread, but I also like to use my serrated knife for cutting the skin off or cutting around the pit of a mango. Lastly, what's the baby paring knife for? The shorter blade of the paring knife helps us make smaller, more precise cuts. I use a paring knife least often out of the three knives that we've talked about, but when I do use it, it's usually to cut up single servings of fruits or veggies. So I might use it to slice up an apple or dice up some cucumber for a salad. The paring knife might be a good one to grab if you want to have some cherry tomatoes or getting back to how paring knives are great for precision. Think of if you cut an apple in half and you want to carve out the apple core. Paring knives are great for that. Or if you think about a head of cauliflower and you want to get in there and trim yourself some cauliflower florets, the paring knife would be perfect. So there you have it folks. Three staple knives to keep in your kitchen for cooking and food prep. Do we have time for a bonus knife? I'll be real quick. The humble butter knife. It's actually probably a dinner knife that we're referring to, but I call it a butter knife. You know, the one you set your table with at dinner and the one we use to smear some luscious butter onto our toast. It's an absolute essential. Well, if you liked today's episode, I'd be grateful if you would rate and leave a review for the show. If you'd like to connect with me, I will leave the recipes with Ray social media info in the show notes for you guys. And I would like to leave you all with this. Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And if you feel led to do so, I've left a little passage of scripture down in the show notes for you guys to check out if you would like. Thank you to each and every one of you for listening, and we'll talk next week.